it's been raining for like three days now. I've been meaning to get to this video. But we got a new puppy. She makes a lot of noise. I don't really have anywhere to film because it's raining. But yeah. So in the last part, we covered the power delivery system for the Firefly eSkate remotes. So let's just go ahead and get started with the logic portion of it. Just some cars. And I just don't have anywhere to film. So let's just get started. So the second half of the remote portion of this tutorial is based around the Arduino Nano V3, the OLED screen, Deadman switch, NRF radio board, and the Hall effect sensor. We'll start by taking a look at the schematic itself. First thing I'll bring your attention to is all of the ground arrows coming from the various components. This is your common ground connection. These can all just run to either of the ground pins on the Arduino. When I built mine, I split up the ground connections so that I had two components going to each pin. Let's move on to the first part. I figure we'll start easy with the switch and its two wires, and then move on to the parts with more wires as we go. First thing you can do with your switch is remove the metal lever. We won't be needing it since the design accounts for it on the trigger itself. Now you'll see three pins on the switch. C, N, O, and NC. These stand for closed, normally open, and normally closed respectively. What that means is you want to use the C pin and the NO pin. When you press the trigger, the C, the C pin and the NO pin are then connected. That's the behavior we want for the dead man switch. So go ahead and solder your leads to those two pins. Now the switch doesn't particularly matter which pin is ground, but for the sake of this guide, let's just say that the C pin will go to the D4 pin on the Arduino and the NO pin will go to ground. Solder those connections and your first part is done. Perfect. Moving on to the part with the next most wires, we've got the Hall Effect Sensor. Now the Hall Effect Sensor has three pins and a distinct trapezoidal shape to it. So let's pull up the data sheet to find out what the pinouts are. The data sheet for the sensor I'm using are as follows. The front of the sensor is the side without the circle on it. From left to right, the pin out is five volt in, ground, and V out, which is the signal or the actual part that's gonna be going to the analog pins on the Arduino. So it's laid out just like the Firefly schematic shows. For the 5 volt, measure out the appropriate length of wire. It's as simple as wiring to the 5V labeled pin on the Arduino. Same deal with the ground wire. Measure it, cut it, solder. Now the last pin, V out, that wire is going to the A3 pin on the Arduino like so. Now that's part two out of the way. Next up, we'll do the OLED screen. This part has four wires that will be going to it. They can be relatively short since the screen will be above the Arduino when it's inside of the housing, but as always, make sure to measure an appropriate length of wire so that you can still open your remote in case you need to fix anything later. The OLED should be labeled with ground, VCC, which just means the 5 volt supply from the Arduino in this case, SCK, and SDA. Now SolidGeek has said that the schematic just has a typo on the OLED pinout. SCL on the schematic is actually SCK on the OLED. Anyway, let's start with the black ground wire. I wired mine on the same side as the Hall sensor ground wire. Easy enough. Then there's the VCC line. That is just the same as the five volt pin for the Hall sensor as well. So the VCC pin goes to the same five volt pin on the Arduino with a red wire. Now we get to the SCK pin. You can pick a color for this line. I went with blue like the schematic. The SCK pad goes to the A5 pin on the Arduino. Last but not least, the SDA pad goes to the A4 pin on the Arduino. And once again, you can pick a wire color. With that, you're done your third component. One more to go, and it's by far the most annoying to get right. So, the NRF boards that SolidGeek recommended are not conveniently labeled like the OLED is. Thankfully, the schematic does have the pinout correct. So the pinout is with the antenna facing up towards you. 
and it just follows the exact same schematic starting from top to bottom with the pads on your left. Now, in my opinion, the best way to solder the NRF board is to take all of the appropriately sized cables and solder them in an alternating fashion. So one on the front towards you, one on the back on the opposite side from the antenna, and then vice versa, continually like that. So the 3.3 volt power cable goes on top. Then you flip the board over, CE goes on bottom, flip the board over, CS goes on top, etc. And just do that for all seven of the cables first. Once you have all your cables attached to the appropriate pads, then you can go about soldering them to the Arduino, which is simple enough. Make sure you don't have any bridges between pads because it makes it a total nightmare to troubleshoot when you're trying to get your code uploaded for the first time in a little bit. And it's just, it's just a pain, trust me. So the 3v3 lead goes to the 3v3 labeled pad on the Arduino. The CE pad goes to the D9 pin. The CS pin goes to the D10 pin. The SCK pin goes to the D13 pin. MOSI pin goes to the D11. MISO pin goes to the D12 pin. And then make sure to skip a pad. You're not gonna be using the IRQ pin on the NRF. And then last but not least, the ground pin goes to the ground pin on the Arduino. I put this on the same pin as the dead man switch. Now with all of the critical components you need attached to the Arduino, it's the perfect time to upload the remote code and test everything out before you place it in the housing and attach it to your power system from the last video. So let's move over to the computer side of things and go ahead and upload the transmitter sketch real quick. Once that's done, we can leave the Arduino plugged in and if everything went according to plan, the OLED should light up for the first time with your boot up screen. It's gonna be a little different from mine since I've customized mine, but that's something I can cover in a separate video if there's any interest in it. Now the main point of this test right now is to make sure that the screen trigger and Hall effect sensor work. If the screen lit up, there's a check for that. Next, you wanna press and hold the switch and then bring a magnet near the Hall effect sensor. If the throttle bar starts to move as you get close to the sensor, then you're all good to go. You can't test the radio quite yet until you finish your receiver, unfortunately, but you'll get to it at some point. Now that you've confirmed everything else works though, it's time to move the logic circuit into your housing and attach the power system. Now I made a small error right at the end of the video in the last part of the series. You should have a red wire attached to the out plus of your boost converter. A black wire attached to the out minus of the boost converter. But then I missed a connection. You also have to attach a wire to the in plus with a 10k ohm resistor on the end of it. This wire will give you your battery level to the remote. So that 10k resistor with the wire attached to the in plus will be going to your A2 pin on the Arduino. It gives you your remote battery levels. Now you can place the plate into your remote to insulate your power delivery system from the logic stuff and route your three wires from under the plate through the cutout. The 10k ohm resistor you just added needs to be soldered to the A2 pin of the Arduino. Then the red wire from the out plus needs to be soldered to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino where the hall sensor and OLED are currently attached. Then the black wire from the out minus goes to one of the ground pins on the Arduino, it doesn't matter which one. I picked the same side as the 5 volt pin just to make things easier. And that should be it. Go ahead and turn on the power switch to make sure everything turns on properly once more. And if everything appears to be working in order, congratulations, you've just finished your Firefly remote. There's still more work ahead of you, but that's all for this part of the Firefly build guide. And the next part, we'll be tackling the receiver. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section or head over to the builder's form and ask the creator himself. Until next time, toodles.